And uh, with my great honor, I would like to introduce Professor Janet Thresher, who has been continuously doing great contributions to eating disorders field. Thank you. Right, thank you very much. Well, my task is to talk about the work we've been doing with and for carers, and that's family members, but perhaps friends, partners, siblings, etc. So over 20 years, we've been doing participatory co-design and co-delivery of interventions for carers. And I want to introduce up some of the large number of people who've been involved. So on the left, we've got Jenny Langley, whose son had an eating disorder and now runs uh, training and treatment, group support, group skill, skill support, uh, and wrote up the manual for that. Then next we've got Pam McDonald, who had to travel all around the world with her family. Uh, her daughter developed anorexia nervosa, and she managed to come and work with us doing an MSc and then a PhD with us on one of our first uh, treatment studies with carers. And at the final end is Veronica Kammerling, who again, two daughters, developed an eating disorder. Uh, and she came and helped us run our carers conferences that we, we ran for about uh, 20 years, where we exchanged, exchanged ideas with, uh, with carers. And we've managed to get, as Ulrika says, little bits of re research funding for all of this. Uh, but perhaps carers have led a lot of this importantly. Um, and so what we developed uh, with these carers uh, was an in intervention echo, experience carers helping others. And the carers themselves wanted the knowledge. They, they, the one problem, Julia, if you don't mind, is you know that they, they, the family therapy was a theoretical, and parents find this really hard. You know, we all want to know the causes and consequences so we can target our treatment, uh, and and so they were very frustrated uh, by that. So we very much wanted to help them understand what we know. Of course, that's evolving all the time, but also. What they do at home is just a small part, is a large part of what we do on inpatient units or on outpatients. So we want to show the skills that we'd found are helpful and stop you getting into traps. So we, we were so able to get uh, Steve Rolnick, an expert in motivational interviewing, to come to the ward and train us in that right at the beginning of, of uh, the start of motivational in interviewing. Also, we've got the experts from Canada helping us with emotion focus therapy uh, and also exposure and response prevention. So we we're able to share these psychological approaches with our carers uh, and they were very interested and found it helpful to know what to do. How do we target things? Uh, and as I say, the targets were the lack of knowledge about causes, consequences, the care pathway, their grief they have and the isolation they have, that's echoing Julian with you, uh, and their expressed emotion, which is either criticism or overprotection and colluding with the illness that also occurs. Uh, and so what we wanted them to help us with and that they're best able to do it is to try and teach skills to, to get a recovery identity to connect with all that why i mean we're, we're saying the same thing <laughs> which is good um so uh our first study was part of the Ariadne study, so you heard about all these uh, trials. Uh, and so we, for one of the limbs of this Ariadne study was an ECHO study where we took inpatients from all across England and gave them carer skills training. We gave them the book that we'd written, co-written, co and we also gave them telephone uh, coaching. Uh, from people who we've trained, who were 
a large proportion who are carers themselves. So we had task sharing that carers uh, helped uh, the carers who were going through the process of their loved one transitioning out of inpatient care. And what you can see on this slide is how this intervention reduced carers' burden and reduced some of these emotional behaviours, the, the criticism, the accommodation, etc. And giving hope and focus, I can walk alongside my daughter and can nudge her just like the dolphin metaphor and has skills in able to challenge some of the anorexic behaviours. And this photograph shows a large number of our carers, uh, task, peer support workers. And this shows us um, the impact on the patients themselves. So these were patients who were in and leaving hospital to go home to live, uh, back to live in the community. Uh, and so we didn't do anything to alter their treatment, uh, but all we were doing was supporting the parents so that they'd be able to help with that aspect of their care. So what you can see uh, is that dotted line is the echo intervention. You're not getting much of a difference in terms of weight, although by two years it is slightly higher, but we've got a reduction in EDEQ, uh, which is general eating psychopathology. We've got a reduction in distress and we've got an improvement in quality of life. So indirectly, we're impacting on how people trans transition from inpatient care. And also, uh, we found that the length of stay was impacted. So the length of their initial admission was reduced from 148 to in the, the non-intervention, whereas it's reduced to 168 for those who had the care as intervention. So uh, that's 20 days shorter. Uh, and also the number of people who had to come back into hospital, as you heard, that sometimes people uh, have this clinical clinical relapse and remission and cycling of inpatient care. Uh, and, and these quotations again, uh, finding people found this extremely helpful, having their carers able to give them more targeted support. Um, and it wasn't just that we were focusing on how they fed them, we were thinking of a lot more things of the emotional atmosphere at home, etc. And so we, leading on from this, uh, we then used mantra, which you've heard about or Rika talked about, and we used a shortened version of this to give to the patients, uh, at the same time giving the carer's intervention uh, to the carers. Uh, the design was slightly different in that it was done on a website and uh, we didn't have as much uh, interactions uh, with the uh, carers or the, the patients. It was more done giving them videos of people who'd recovered from an eating disorder, giving them tips. It was sharing written materials and there was uh, on an online group as well, which gave interaction. So it was a bit of a diff different design, much bigger, but done with quite minimal money. And you can see the results here that we're getting uh, care of distress decreasing and the skills increasing, but we didn't get in this time a group difference. Um, and what we found was that, in fact, the carers, they didn't adhere. We had our computer monitoring how often they went online, etc. So we got the data from the, the uh, website, but only 20% adhered. And what they explained was that they just didn't have time to do this. They were so busy coping with their daughter coming back. And this shows the, the results from the patients. Uh, what you, again, you're seeing that 
although we're getting reduction in uh, psychopathology, depression uh, and uh, social adjustment, uh, we're an, and an increase in weight, but we aren't getting any difference between the two groups. Uh, notably, we had five deaths in this cohort uh, recently done. Uh, we have the bed days, and again, we didn't get any difference between the groups uh, uh, in this case. Although the sensitivity analysis on the health economic data did show that those who um, engaged did show more, some more benefit, but it wasn't uh, very, very marked. So a bit of a disappointment after the first study. This is just echoing um, Jerome's talk earlier, because this just shows how this poster was in Parliament. And, and so this, this work that we've done with, with carers ju just underlines how important this is, because they are the ones who have taken it to Parliament. And as Jerome says, I think Parliament agree more, it's, it's the wider wider population that we've got to get helping to see these are really problems that we need to to help uh, manage. And these show some of the people involved in that, uh, many people who are involved in the last triangle study. So thank you. Okay, then if you don't have any questions, thank you very much okay. again. Yeah.